All right, hey, it's Dina Tollefson, and welcome to my studio. I am so glad to have you here today. Let me just get the camera adjusted a little bit. Well, it's gonna be a really great top today. We are gonna be painting sunflowers, some joyful sunflowers, and um, it's starting to become spring here. I've really got spring fever, and I love to paint sunflowers. I think you're really gonna enjoy this. Uh, today, um, also, with this, um, with this painting, I'm going to be talking a little bit about negative painting, which is if you have your subject, uh, negative painting would be the area behind your subject, or some people call the background, about how to compose your painting so that your background or your negative space um, is as important as your positive space or helps develop the painting, and then also how to, um, how to crop your picture or set your still life up so that your shapes, uh, as they hit the edge of the canvas, are going to uh, make some pleasing uh, negative space forms. And then also with negative painting, how to, um, you know, you paint the subject, but then um, negative painting, with negative painting, you actually carve out the subject through painting the, uh, what we would normally call the background. So let's get started. And if you are new to my uh, channel, I welcome you. And if you, this is your first time um, you know, here, I, I say welcome. And if you've come back before, thank you for coming back and I appreciate that you're here. So how I got this canvas started was I used some, just some fluid um, acrylic. And uh, I'm gonna actually uh, check the chat here. Let's see, let's get, uh, get this set up. And if you are on the chat, I would love to hear from you, love to chat with you. And if you like to be quiet, that works too. So I see that we do have some people here. And hey, Joy, good to see you. And um, oh, and Tiffany, good to see you too. Thank you guys for joining. So I uh, started with some acrylic. You just shake this up, and then I just uh, put this onto the canvas. And I used my super large, this is a three inch um, pretty, just a house painting brush. And I used that for toning my canvas. I just began by uh, putting this fluid um, acrylic over the entire surface. And by doing this, um, this sets a tone, literally it tones the canvas, but it removes the, gets rid of that scary white and it sets a overall color scheme for the painting. And I actually put this on every painting that I do. And Mushy Bear, hi, thank you for joining us. So, um, so I started with this and let it dry and all the other paints that I'm using. So this is the only fluid acrylic I'm using. All of the other paints that I'm using are these heavy bodied acrylics. So uh, let me show you what we've got here uh, today. Uh, pyro orange. Uh, these all happen to be from Golden. Uh, yellow ochre. Diorolite yellow. Primary yellow. Permanent violet dark. Mars Black, Dioxazine Purple, and I go through so much paint that I buy these uh, really large tubes, but um, they also have these smaller tubes. I've got a few of the smaller tubes here for colors I don't use as often. Uh, this is a, a Cad Yellow Light. I usually use a Cad Yellow Hue, but this is a Cad Yellow um, Indian Yellow, and that makes just a wonderful kind of a red, a reddy orange color. Um, Aurelian hue and transparent red oxide. So um, I want to, uh, when I'm painting, I'll set these paints over here. So I went ahead and put these all out on the palette. Oh, Madonna. Hey, welcome, Madonna. My friend, my sister from, uh, my sister in spirit from Missouri. So, um, so here the colors are all laid out. We've got titanium white, and then a bunch of different the yellows. So here's the primary yellow. Here's the um, cadmium yellow, the little difference in color. Here's diorylide yellow, yellow ochre, green gold, naphthol, orange. Um, this is a, uh, what was that? Oh, uh, sorry, uh, pyrrol orange, naphthol red. Uh, here's the black, Mars black, uh, dioxazine purple, and here's the Indian uh, yellow. I think that was the Indian yellow. Is that right? And uh, I can't remember. I'll, I'll go back and look. Because <laughs> I don't see, I don't use those too very often. Let me grab those colors back here just to be sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here was the Indian yellow hue. So um, I'll get started. And the first thing that I'm going to do is, um, 
is uh, draw. I've draw, uh, drawn a little bit with the pencil, and I'll get started here uh, mixing. So I'm going to grab one of my palette knives across here, and I'm going to get one that's good for mixing. Since I'm not going to be painting with a knife today, I'm only going to be mixing, I'll use one of these. This technically is a um, painting, or this is technically a painting knife, but I use it for for mixing paint also. And I forgot on my palette, I'll put just a little bit of this um, phthalo blue red shade on my palette also. I like to use that for mixing. So just a little touch of that. But I use that color uh, to to do what I would call drawing on the canvas. So let's start out here with a little bit of yellow ochre and just a touch of the phthalo blue red shade. And what I'm gonna be doing today <clears throat> is a technique uh, called grisaille or grisaille. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it properly, but it's a French term that um, means that you're painting in gray or it's uh, basically neutrals and you use all these different neutrals, and when you're using the neutrals, then you are um, establishing a value pattern or, or a light and dark pattern. So I'm gonna paint the painting first in just really um, light and dark and establish where those lights and those darks are gonna go. Okay, so let's grab a paintbrush and get started with that. And how are you guys doing? Oh, hey Siri, good to see you. Let's uh, let's grab a paintbrush. So in order to um, draw on the composition, I'm going to actually use a little bit longer brush. I'm going to grab something from. Let me get the big stash out. Oh, <laughs> this thing's heavy. All right, I'm going to get something with a longer handle to draw with. So I'm thinking I'm going to use. Uh, maybe I'll use this guy. Uh, I like to use a flat brush, so um, a flat bristle brush, or not bristle. This is a um, uh, this is a flat brush, uh, uh, talcon. It's like a um, nylon talcon kind of a color, or kind of a color. It's a um, what is it here? A low cornell number seven, but it's a um, it's not a real bristle brush. It's not. It's a synthetic. That's the word. It's synthetic. Okay, so let's get some color going on here. And so I'll start drawing with just this lightest color, just dipping my brush in the water and drawing out the composition of the sunflowers. And what I'm going for is a very loose and um, expressive kind of a feeling with these, um, let's get a leaf over here. But I'm just using this medium kind of color and drawing in the basic shapes that we'll see. The outline of the basic shapes. And then coming back in then with the color, uh, a person can also draw this out. I drew this out just kind of a general idea with some pencil. You can just use pencil and then come in with your color, or you can do like what I'm doing here where you establish, you know, the color with, with paint. Either one works. All right, and here we're going to put an area of dark. So how are you guys doing? What, uh, what is the weather like? Um, What's the weather like by you? I'll say I'll start out by saying it's it's cool here today, and um, we're going to be getting some rain starting out spring. But uh, let me know what um, what the weather is like by you. All right. So when I'm painting this, I'm also thinking about getting, um, having some of the elements come off the edge of the canvas. I want to have an area, so this is going to be light coming in here, 
I want to have a light be able to travel and I'm also connecting the objects and overlapping the objects um, for more three-dimensionality. So let's define the center of the flower here. Okay, so, uh, so you said it's gloomy and cold, Siri, by you. When you say now, everybody has a different idea of what is cold. So when I say cold here, I think we're at like, I don't know, 30 or 40 degrees, something like that. We'll call that like a cold spring day. Um, it was funny, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said it was cold and it was like 70 degrees. And I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> I would call that pretty warm. But, uh, but for them that was cold. And so, uh, so Madonna, you're saying it's cool but sunny today. And, um, oh, you've got rain and, and um, Okay, so Madonna is uh, in Missouri, and I am in Iowa, so we're one state apart. But it's uh, sometimes when Madonna's getting weather, then I'll be getting it later. It's just kind of a, of a thing, you know? All right, so let's see here. Let's get, uh, so here's a stem. Let's establish a stem. Let's think about where the light is gonna come and where the dark is gonna come. So let me get pick up some of this dark color here. Okay, Siri, you're in Canada, so likely, um, if you say something's cold, it's, it is indeed cold in Canada, right? Canada, I, you know, I have never been to Canada, and I've always wanted to go. I really do need to go sometime. And Canada is such a large and beautiful country. I've just, uh, I know just from seeing movies that are shot in Canada, it's really a beautiful place. Have you lived there your whole life, Siri? And, uh, oh, Tiana. Hi, Tiana. And good to see you. And thank you, everyone who's joining. Oh, and, um, okay, so Tiana, you said that you live in Canada, too. Wouldn't it be wild if you and Siri knew each other somehow? Well, Canada's so huge, of course. And oh, and look, and Chrissy is here. Hi, Chrissy. Welcome. Glad to have you here. So now if I think about where the dark is hitting on the stem, I'm going to just draw the dark areas in. And on, I love on... Um, I love on these flowers, these really spiky elements that we can get. So we're going to be really playing up these dark, even though this is um, going to be light over here, I'm just going to draw in the basic shape of the stem so I remember that that's going to be dark. And then back over here, I've got some dark elements of leaves coming off, so I'm going to get those darks. So this, again, with this grisaille pattern, or grisaille pattern, I should look up. Can someone look up how to spell grisaille? It's G-R-I-S-A-L-L-E, I believe is how you spell it, but basically just means like a light, uh, like a light and dark pattern made normally with neutrals, but it's kind of a way to start your painting. So I'm doing this idea of um, getting the lights and darks in first, and then coming in with real color. So if this is the back of the stem, that's all going to be, and then the leaf would be over here. And uh, yeah, Chrissy, you're in England, talking about um, what's the weather like over by you. It is kind of um, cool. It's like, now we do Fahrenheit here. You guys do Celsius, I think, in England. And um, your entire family's in England. Oh, Tiana, you're a dual citizen. That's neat. That's awesome chilly wind today okay you know my husband has this little joke he likes just this little silly thing he likes to say chilly tomorrow or chilly today and hot tamale or hot tomorrow <laughs> it's like the way he says it it's like a silly little pun and we both always laugh it's kind of a fun little thing all right so let's start to just establish the light and dark color scheme here or where the where the darks and the lights are and I've got a little, there's a little thing coming off of over here. So we'll get that guy going. And then now with the darks, so I'm going to go in and just 
establish this dark color here. Again, just using the phthalo blue red shade and the yellow ochre to set up the lights and darks. And yeah, it is a small world, absolutely. You've designed playgrounds, Madonna. I tell you, you are always, Madonna, you are always uh, surprising and amazing me. Designing playgrounds, that's awesome. You know, and I think designing a playground would be tricky too because you've gotta think of the safety of the children, but you also have to be thinking about them having fun and then think about um, the setting that's gonna go in, like how are they gonna, how are the kids gonna get around in the playground? How are the adults or the people setting it up? How are they gonna assemble it, put it together? What do you, you know, depend, I suppose, uh, Madonna, are these like for daycares or is this like for like a whole school, elementary schools, that type of thing, or parks? That's really fascinating. And, um, okay, and so, and uh, you know what, Siri, you are also, Siri is an engineer, so I um, started out my whole uh, life, my career, my whatever, I guess, I, but I was an engineer for lots and lots of years, and um, then left that to do painting full time. And then there's a dark element right under here and some dark in here. Okay, so now we're just gonna get our lights and our darks established. Tiana, oh my gosh, it's like a, an engineer thing. I love it, you guys, that's so awesome. That is like so awesome. A lot of times people I think think that engineers are not, uh, can't be artistic or creative. And um, I have learned, I've just met so many over the years, so many engineers who um, are uh, painters, photographers, uh, musicians. My son, um, Will, is a um, very, he's an engineer. He's a very accomplished uh, trombonist. My son, John, is a very, um, is an excellent artist. My dad has a lot of patents. My husband is a bird watcher, so he says he doesn't like to do uh, to do art necessarily, but he enjoys watching art. But yeah, it's interesting with artists how many. Um... Okay, so Siri, um, electrical and computer engineer. Yeah, so I was a um, I was trained as a um, electrical engineer, and um, and then did uh, I did systems engineering work and did a lot of defense work. So, okay, and you're saying, okay, Madonna, you worked for little, oh, little tykes. Oh, Madonna, little tykes. Those are those cute little cars. Uh, 23 years in design, park schools, all commercial, and you have associate degree in architecture design. Oh my gosh, you guys, that's so awesome. That is really fabulous. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now I've established the... Um, Kind of the light and dark pattern of the areas that uh, these are going to be the darkest on the painting and then um, then we've got a really super light area so I'm going to grab my grayscale here so excuse my reach here all right so the grayscale um, the grayscale is laid out between oh and Tiana you said okay oh Chrissy your dad was an engineer Chrissy, this is what, um, I knew there was something about you. Your dad is an engineer, I love it, okay. And Tiana, you're looking for a job and um, too much traveling, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well Tiana, um, all of our good wishes to you and everybody uh, say a good a good luck, good wish thing to Tiana That and I know that you're gonna do well, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah, and Chrissy, I love it that your dad was an engineer. My dad's a en retired engineer also. Uh, so that's that's awesome. My daughter-in-law is an engineer. Um, it's kind of a thing. All right, so uh, on the grayscale, ideally on any painting, we want to try and have areas that are in, this is, starts with the white is 10 and black is 1, and it goes all the way up 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
Ideally, on any successful painting, we want to try and have, unless it's a tonalist painting, and then we would keep all the values in here, or maybe a few over here. But what we want to try and do is have some values that are here in this light area and some values that are here in the dark area and knowing that the rest of the painting is going to have values in this section. So if I go here and squint, I can see that I don't have yet a dark enough center. So I know that I need to go quite a bit darker in these areas. And um, then my background, I'm planning to be white. And so, hey, Rachel. Good to see you. And Rachel, you have to give a quick um, a quick uh, good luck to Tiana, who has an uh, interview tomorrow, which is uh, very exciting. So, um, so anyway, uh, let's now think about getting some darks in here, and, and then we're going to have a light and a dark pattern. So I want to start first with getting, I like on all my paintings to start with the darks and the lights and establish that first. And then if that's not dynamic enough, then I know that I need to change something. And I'll know early on in the painting. So I'm gonna start with some of this dioxazine purple. And get that right up here. And uh, the pyrrole orange. So I don't typically use browns in my work. I like to mix my brown colors by using uh, orange and purple together. And I think that makes just kind of a wonderful orangey brown kind of a chocolatey color. So now let me add a little bit more orange to some of this so we'll make an in-between color that can be used on the center of the flowers. So we'll have kind of this rusty color and, um, and Tiana, you will dazzle them. That's awesome, very exciting. Okay, so we have this kind of uh, rusty color and then this kind of chocolatey color that we've mixed up here. And also, I thank everybody for all of, the, all of your likes and I love it that you guys are here and everybody is supporting one another. It's, it's fantastic. So, just gonna rinse off this here in my Oops, in my water bucket, just rinse off my knife. And then wipe it off. I've just got a paper towel I've been using to wipe off, but it's important to get tools really clean um, afterwards. So what happened was I got some of the purple at the bottom of the knife, so I want to be able to get that off. So, oh my gosh, goodness, Ian. Hey, welcome, and glad to have you here. Ian is, uh, is very knowledgeable in all art topics, and uh, glad to have you here. And, um, and are you starting your, Ian, are you starting your acrylic April? Let us know. And Artsy Studios, good to see you. Oh, and we're, I'm so glad to have you guys paint with Jay. Um, Oh, thank you, thank you, Paint with Jay. I'm glad to see, I'm glad to hear you that you're here too. It's wonderful to have everybody here. It's great, and I thank you for joining. So now that we've drawn with this, I've kind of drawn everything out with this tiny little, uh, I'll call it tiny, this kind of relatively small brush, a number seven, low Cornell. I'm going to now grab a bigger brush. I'm going to grab this guy here. We'll use, uh, well, let's see. Uh, maybe he's a little too big. Let's try. Is this the same size? I was going to say, let's try this one. He's small. <laughs> Look, it's the same size. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, let's try. Let's try this guy. He's, he's smaller. Okay. Here's a number 12, low Cornell. Let's, let's use this to put the, uh, the dark color on. Reason I'm picking a uh, relatively large brush is because I want to get uh, with the marks when we're putting the color on I don't want to have to be fussy with the color I want to be able to just go in and get it laid on just going right over the top of this phthalo blue red shade and uh, yellow ochre mixture from before and starting to establish the area of dark for the uh, center of the sunflowers.
And, um, oh, Ian, okay, so you have, um, you've just started and you've put up day two. Okay, Ian, I'm going to check those out and see what, see how it's been going. And Ian, for those who don't know what acrylic April is, would you uh, please let them know? And, uh, oh, is Divine Art here? Hi, Divine. Welcome. And thank you, everyone, for joining. All right, so this purple that I've mixed up, or this uh, dioxazine purple plus the pyrrole orange to make this darkest color is what's going in the center of these, uh, these little areas here showing where all the seeds are. The seeds are growing. On sunflowers, uh, we grow sunflowers in our garden. And um, I'll say that we attempt to grow sunflowers because um, we have these animals. We have um, Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph, who are our uh, rabbits, outdoor rabbits. Well, they're not outdoor rabbits. I mean, they're not, they're outdoor pets in the way that they're wild animals. And we named them Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph, the, the rabbit family. And then we have um, Charles Wood, who is our groundhog. And these all these animals live um, underneath this cement area in our garden. And they all have a den, like a, a communal den that's under there. And um, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Lagomorph, and they all spoon in the winter. They all go in there. We have um, the opossums, the opossum Paul. And, um, oh, how many different colors of paints do I have? Okay. All right, so, um, yeah, a den. They are in a den, and Charles would. Yeah, okay, so Tiana, let me show you. I have, I'll show you. I'm going to grab them all here. So, and I'll just lift this up. This is the set of colors that I'm using. Ooh, well, goodness. <laughs> well, one just fell. But um, this is the set of paints that we're using today. These are all golden, heavy bodied. And um, I'm using the, this is the um, two fluid ounce size of those tiny ones. And then five fluid ounces for the big guys. But then I've got a, another bucket of these uh, paints. So these are other uh, my other um, golden paints that are, we're not using in today's project. So I, I'll say I'm a bit of a paint hoarder. Um, I don't know if that's possible. And then I've got other brands too. But, uh, I guess it's like for anybody that does um, like quilting or uh, work with fabric, um, you can kind of like fabric hoarding and that kind of thing. It's a uh, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a thing where you just have to have those colors, right? But really, in theory, a person could uh, get by with black, white, red, yellow, and, and a blue. But um, it's kind of nice to have these other colors just available. But, um, but yeah, these sunflowers. So we grow, try to grow sunflowers. And my husband puts sunflower seeds out for the birds and then always tries to grow some. And invariably, Charles Wood, our uh, woodchuck, he will come in. And there must be something um, really special about the... Uh, there's got to be something super special about the smell of the plant. Because Charles Wood will go in and he'll start trimming and eating right away the uh, those... Um, the leaves and the stalks of the sunflowers as soon as you can see it and then the deer will come by and want to do the same thing too so it's uh it's kind of a battle to see if we can keep a sunflower growing without um, someone in the garden trying to eat it and then we also have these oh and Ian you're saying okay uh, acrylic April is the month of acrylic small paintings each day a month for all acrylic art forms yeah and um and so Ian if uh if people want to learn more, they can go and look on your site. And then I think, was it, um, oh my goodness, what is, uh, Art Bar, I think, is she the one, uh, Danina? Danina, I think she's the one you said it started um, Acrylic April. But uh, let me know if you guys are able to successfully um, get sunflowers growing. Okay, and so, um, 
All right, and let me look at the chat here. So Divine, you're asking a golden heavy body better than Liquitex heavy body? And um, well, Divine, that's a good question. Um, I have not tested them side by side. I, um, I typically use just the golden heavy body. I've not tried Liquitex. Um, anybody that's out in the chat or in the comments later, if you're using Liquitex or you have used it and have also used golden and um, that might be a good um, live stream topic actually is to test and compare the two. I am planning a live stream that's going to be testing and comparing um, a super inexpensive brand against expensive brands to see, you know, is it worth it or not. I've got that planned for, um, I don't know, a week or so from now. I'll, I'll be doing that. But yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. If anybody knows, uh, please, you know, please write in. And then, um, okay, Rachel, you're trying to grow some sunflowers this year. And Divine, your mom grows sunflowers and marigolds. I can grow marigolds successfully because uh, the deer um, won't eat, or uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph, nobody seems to want to eat the marigolds. And I believe they have some type of a chemical or something associated with them that they will not, uh, that they won't be uh, eaten. There's something that uh, repels some of the animals, some of the insects. So now let me just rinse out my brush, get this color. Okay, so Madonna, you're saying you like golden batter and your Liquitex came out like cottage cheese. Oh, that's a bad texture if that happens. Um, and that's, uh, yeah. So Madonna has tried and she prefers uh, the golden. Anybody else, uh, you know, go ahead and weigh in. I think that's what can also be so helpful is these type of live streams is we can get questions answered from each other. Um, which is always a good thing. So now I've established my areas of dark and uh, now I can also go back in with black. So I've got purple and the orange and I can go over later and add some additional um, color if needed. Some even if we even need to go a little darker and warmer. So the black here is a darker and a warmer color than the purple and orange mixture that we have. So if I go in, actually I'll wait for that to dry. Well, let me wait for that to dry a little bit. All right, so now we can mix up this color. Sylvia, hey, welcome Sylvia, glad to see you. But for those of you who do grow um, the uh, for those of you who do grow marigolds, the, um, let's see, let's pick a color. What I want to do now is I want to start establishing the light areas on the flowers, so the area where the light, the highlight is hitting. So I'm going to mix up some white and some yellow for that. Uh, for those of you who do grow marigolds, or not, not marigolds, uh, sunflowers, um, are you growing the like the super tall ones and are you growing them like Rachel you said that you're going to be growing some uh, Do you grow them to put out for bird food? Do you eat the sunflowers or do you cut them as flowers or just enjoy them in the garden? I know that sunflowers um, Have a lot of different meanings. Uh, they can mean adoration and loyalty and longevity um, In the floral industry they have that's what they say that uh, sunflowers represent um, and other people believe that um, sunflowers are a symbol of God's love, which I think that's really neat. Okay, so let me change up my water here. I'm just going to set this bucket to the side. Get a new bucket of clean water. And the reason I'm using the um, clean water is that, um, oh, and... Uh, Ian, you're talking about uh, Kryler, um, should be one of the top paints. Now, um, Chrissy, you had in your live stream, uh, you just were using Kryla, right? C-R-Y-L-A, is that right? Um, or is it Kryler, Kryla, Kryler? And um, yeah, so um, I'll be curious to see as time goes on, Chrissy, what you think of that paint. How do you like it? 
and compared to the other ones that you're using. So I'm gonna now go in, I mix some white, uh, titanium white, and then the cad yellow, uh, just to make a super light color. This will be the lightest color on the blossom, the lightest area on the blossom. So what I'm looking at now is uh, where are the highlight areas going to be? So I'm just gonna put those in now. and only the areas that are the highlight. So I'm establishing the lightest and the darkest areas of the flowers now through this process. All right, so we have a little light hitting here. We have a light petal, a wayward petal is coming down here. And there's some light hitting right up next to the center. All right, there. And here. All right, so Rachel, you're saying that you, um, your plan is to mostly enjoy them in the garden. You prepared a large circle to grow them. Oh, hey, that'd be neat to have uh, have, like to be inside of a to be inside of a circle of sunflowers that would be very pretty that sounds wonderful and Rachel is so creative I know Rachel but you will have something fabulous with it okay let's get a little highlight here and here when you put your highlights on at first it's like oh my goodness or your your lightest areas like, oh, it's too light, it's, you know, too much of a shock. But once all the other things are put in, it's important to have a light enough area. And there's light here. And we can go back again later and establish more lights and more darks later. But, uh, but for now, this is going to be the lightest. Actually, I see a little bit here. I'm going to connect that. So if, ideally, if possible, if you try and connect your light areas and try and connect your dark areas, um, then that's, uh, that's always a good thing. And so, um, okay, and so you're saying uh, you use the dollar, or the dollar store paint, Deco art brand? Yeah, and you know what? You, a person can do, it's, it's really about your expression. What materials you use are not the important thing. It's important to just get out there and create, absolutely. Ian, you used to say you grow one so tall that you could uh, you could touch it out the window on the second floor. Oh my goodness! All right, so this is a testament for um, because Ian lives in England. This is a testament for how wonderful England is for growing things. I tell you, absolutely, that's fantastic. All right, so now let's take uh, some of our let's now work from the light out. So I'm gonna take and take some of this other yellow and just start uh, filling in the petals. And I'm gonna be working around the highlights. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's tempting to look at a flower, any flower, a sunflower or whatever, when you're painting it, and it's tempting to just look at it and say, oh, it's this color. And, you know, if you look at, uh, if you look at something and you have it in a certain light, it's actually, you know, really many colors. And the idea of trying to make something look three-dimensional, in order to do that in two dimension, a two, uh, two-dimensional plane, which is a, like a piece of paper or a canvas, when we do that, uh, in order to make something look three-dimensional, we have to exaggerate what we're seeing. Um, and then when we exaggerate it, it actually will look convincing when we stand far away because we're looking at it in two-dimension as opposed to the actual object is three-dimensional. So when you see the three-dimensional object, you're like, oh, I can see that it's three-dimensional. But um, that's why getting the lighting is important on a still life, that type of thing. Okay, and then uh, you had, oh my gosh, Rachel, you had a neighbor who had 
grew a variety that was two feet across. Oh my gosh, wow. Well, I know that sunflowers, um, uh, I know that they can be, uh, they can have like a thousand or two thousand seeds per head. You know, some of the flowers that you might see um, at a floral stand or in the florist, they um, are growing it more for the petals and less for the actual head. Um, but Native Americans uh, in the, uh, so sunflowers are helianthus. So we do grow a perennial helianthus that um, our eastern um, goldfinches like to eat. And the, um, and for whatever reason, nobody's eating those. I don't know why. Um, they, they don't like, they like to eat the sunflowers that were the annual sunflowers, but Native Americans would use the, would use these and they use all different parts of the plant, but uh, oil and all of that type of thing. But um, it's a big industry uh, worldwide is growing sunflowers. And, uh, oh, it's snowing by you. Oh my goodness. Wow. Sylvia, goodness. Ian says that you, um, um, you're you using cheap plates uh, from a place called B&M to do challenge this month, and you wanted to do just the three primary colors, black and white. Okay, see, so there, Ian, um, you know, the question had come up, um, you know, how many colors or whatever, and, and there's an example of someone who is using as a challenge. Uh, Ian is using just the three colors, blue, yellow, red, and uh, I assume you're just using blue, re uh, red, yellow, and black and white. Ian, let us know if it's other colors that you're using then, but I assume it's uh, blue, yellow, and red. All right, so I'm just now putting this yellow, and I'm only putting the yellow where I see that it's close to the highlight, or I see that the color is, I'm using this as my second brightest yellow. And I'm just putting it near the highlight and scrubbing it in. Because what I'm trying to aim for is a sense of three-dimensionality in these flowers. And um, and I'm working to get a feeling like some of the petals are curving, some of them are moving forward, some of them are moving out, that kind of feeling. Okay, now I need a little bit more of this yellow, so let me grab the tube. Okay, so this was the golden primary yellow. We'll get a little bit more here on the palette. There we go. So I'll say the other, um, in our yard, the other uh, creatures that we have are the Sensley family. So um, the Sensleys are um, a fam, S-E-N-S-L-E-Y, like sense. <laughs> they are uh, the skunk family. And um, in this communal burrow, this communal den that's uh, under this um, cement area that we have that the animals congregate into, the um, Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph, Charles Wood, the woodchuck, and um, Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph are the rabbits. And then um, a feral cat actually had gone into the, the, the den, and we could see him going, him or her going in and out. And I was very concerned about the safety of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph because I do know that feral cats will eat uh, rabbits. A lot of animals like to eat rabbits. So thankfully, though, um, I don't know what happened, but for whatever reason, we didn't see the cat, but we did see the rabbits afterwards. So <laughs> I don't know what all happened in that den. And then Charles Wood and uh, his wife, Charlene Wood, spend a lot of time um, in the burrow. But the Sensleys are the, the skunks and... My husband came home the other day, and in the driveway, he saw a deer that was walking around. And then in this wild area near where he has his bird uh, feeders, the Sensleys were there. 
there were three sensleys. And so um, I do know that female skunks will sometimes uh, all live together in a communal burrow in the winter. They don't hibernate, but they go in there. These are uh, striped skunks that we have. They kind of spoon in there. They do. And the skunks, I said the sensleys. Okay, and uh, uh, Cedar Rapids is in Iowa, which is if uh, this is the United States, and if this is, say, New York, and here's Florida down here, and California is over here. Kind of in the middle is Chicago, and that's Illinois, and the Great Lakes are up here, and then Canada's up here. Uh, so if you go down about four hours a little bit west and south is uh, Iowa, and then um, Madonna is down here in Missouri. So if you go travel another, say, five, six hours, um, then Madonna would be, I don't know, Madonna, what area of the state you're in, but Missouri is south of Iowa. And the names are, yeah, well, um, when we give gifts also, just as a, like a little family fun thing, then, um, then the animals that we've named in the yard also give gifts to family members. <laughs> so you might open up a gift from the Sensleys, or you might open up a gift from Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph. I saw Charles Wood uh, romping around. Charles Wood uh, does uh, woodchucks, the, uh, they do, um, or groundhogs. They do actually uh, estuate, or I don't know, they don't estuate, est estivate. They don't estivate. They don't, I, I think they hibernate. I'm not actually sure. But they, um, they do come out, they, they, in the fall, they fatten up. And our Charles Wood gets so large that he can barely waddle. And we're always excited to see that because that means that Charles will be fortified for the winter. Yeah, perfume from the Sensleys. Um, okay, this painting, Chrissy, is not a commission. I'm painting this, um, I'm intending to take this to a gallery. I don't know which one yet. But, um, but yeah, no, this is not, I am working on a commissioned painting and I'm doing a video for it. That is a pond painting. This, this particular painting is uh, 24 wide and 18 tall. And that one is 24 tall and 36 wide. But, um, but I've been working on that and um, um, I'm gonna do like a regular upload, video upload for that when that one's ready. But that one is oil on canvas. This is of course acrylic. That one, uh, the client wanted to have uh, the painting is going to be called uh, Jacqueline's Pond, and she, uh, the uh, people who uh, um, commissioned it, um, it's for their home in Florida, and they have two paintings of mine already, and uh, they wanted to have a, a um, pond painting. So, and her name is Jacqueline, although she goes by the name Jackie but that's her given name is Jacqueline. So, but the, I'm excited about that painting. Okay, so I'm using a little bit of um, yellow ochre here to start to establish some of the darker areas. And now what I wanna do is um, go in and think about the area um, that's, these uh, sunflowers are these really, the really super heavy ones, and they've got like these deep recesses. And I wanna be able to show that in paint but, um, but yeah, okay, so the Sensleys, um, we'll get, let's, actually not that color. Um, the Sensleys, let's go, let's go with orange. I tell you, these Sensleys are really funny because they'll go and um, if they get scared, if you ever encounter a skunk, then um, what you're supposed to do is don't, uh, you're supposed to kind of like make some noise, they can't move very quickly. And they are only going to release their smell, their scent, as a uh, thing if they're really worked up and upset. So what they'll do is they'll stamp their feet first, and um, they'll make some little sounds, and they'll um, kind of do like a movement back and forth, that type of thing. But they avoid, um, the Sensleys will avoid, let me get something to um, take the color back. I'm going to use this to remove, um, I put some 
I'm gonna do a little blend here. Uh, the Sensleys are going to try and avoid conflict and they can only let out their scent a certain number of times before, and I don't recall if it's like how many days it takes to recharge them, but they only have a limited amount of this terrible odor that they can let out. <laughs> and so they kind of reserve it only when they're really feeling threatened. So, so the Sensleys are kind of a thing, like if you see that they're out there, then what I'll do is I'll kind of make a lot of noise. Hey Sensleys, I'm here, or whatever, and hope that they'll, you know. Okay, well, and hey Brandon, thank you for joining us. And, uh, okay, so you're asking what color was used on the background. So Brandon, I started out the entire painting let me just set the palette down and I'll show you. So I started the entire painting with this golden um, fluid yellow ochre and I shook it up and then basically just put it out over the canvas and then I used this super really wide brush and just applied it and that toned the canvas and I love these kind of sweeping movements um, that it leaves um, and it's kind of set it literally tones the canvas and gets rid of the white but uh, but you can use other colors to tone your canvas some people will use um, and here's some diarylide yellow some people will use uh, red some people use gray you know all different colors that you can use to tone your canvas and get rid of that um, initial white of the canvas. And the reason that we do that is it sets, the, sets an overall color scheme. And then um, the big thing is that it will also make it so that we can't, uh, um, we can't make as many mistakes judging colors. Because everything will look light, super dark next to white and it's easier to paint if you start with something that is not white. Now when you're watercolor painting, then of course you want to reserve all the whites of your paper. So that's really just kind of true with acrylic and um, pastel, colored pencil, that type of thing. Um, okay, Tiana, and you know what, Tiana? Um, all my best to you and tomorrow with that interview and everybody will be rooting for you that it goes well. And Madonna, your dogs have barked at them and the spray is bad. Yeah, skunk spray is very, very bad. Once in a while we can smell if a Sensley has gotten worked up. Um, you, that's another way to tell if they're around and that scent is just terrible. It's just nasty, nasty. So what I'm doing now is I'm showing the darker areas here just with, uh, just kind of loosely laying in this uh, diarylide yellow to try and give a feeling of three-dimensionality uh, with these blossoms. And so I'm also trying not to just put the same yellow everywhere, but think about these different yellows. So we've got a very a yellow I mixed with white, um, primary yellow, cad yellow, diarylide yellow, and then these uh, Indian yellow. And um, Yes, Tiana, you will do awesomely. It's fantastic. And Chrissy, yeah, you guys don't have skunks um, in the UK. Skunks are just, um, skunks are really just, I think they're, I want to say if someone can, uh, if someone knows, I think that they're only in like America, the Americas. I don't know, North America. I don't think they're in Africa, but I don't know. Or Asia, Europe. I wouldn't expect them to be in, in uh, Antarctica because that's not the right climate, but I don't know Australia. I don't know if uh, anybody else has skunks or not. That's a good question. I think everybody um, may have heard of skunks through like Pepe Le Pew, the cartoons, that type of thing. All right, so now I can use this diarylide yellow 
to also um, help give a feeling that the petals are turning out. And uh, let's get some gold on him. And up through here, there we go. And, um, okay, so I'm looking at, you got oh, onesies for Ian. <laughs> oh, you have badgers, okay. Yeah, all right, and we have, you know, we've got badgers here, but I don't think our badgers smell, but I don't know. I know badgers are fierce. Fierce and they burrow in the ground. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I don't know that. All right, so let's get some more of the diorolide yellow down here. And then down here, let's put some of the Indian yellow to show that this guy is down below and we can't we can't see based on the color we can't see in from there. Let's add a little red. I think and when you put red in a painting it has a lot of passion. So we're just gonna put a touch of red and I want to blend that a little bit so I'm gonna dip my brush in the water and just come in and blend that. Blend, blend, blend. There we go. So you can blend by um, running something over. You can also blend by adding other colors on top or nearby. So I'll do that, like that method here. All right, and so, and since my goal is to have loose and expressive um, painting, I'm gonna be not worrying too much about the detail. I'm just gonna try and get the more the expression or the color and the feeling of vibrancy. Now let's go in, um, I'm gonna put some of that Indian yellow down here as well to show that this form is turning. And uh, so we don't have to use like black and white to show that something is um, darker. We can just use a darker version of the color. So a darker version of the bright yellows would be like these medium yellows and then some of these other colors here. And then, um, then it becomes a matter of layering. All right, so what I wanna do now is go back in and uh, and we're gonna use a little green gold oh a smell badger okay and you saw a pet skunk on a lead yeah you know what uh, Ian you're right some people will um, you can have skunks actually are supposedly make pretty good pets people will um, take their skunk and then you can have the scent gland removed from the skunk the poor guy but then they can't uh, they can't be a nuisance then. But I have heard of that, where people will do that. I bet that was a really cute pet to see a pet skunk. That's awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so I'm gonna get a little, I mixed a little green gold in with some of the white and the yellow, just to establish the area where the light is hitting on the stem of the flowers. I'll get a little, actually, you know what? We don't want light there. I'll get rid of that later. And also put some light hitting the top of the leaf. And then we can layer and put more of this green gold, just straight green gold in between. And now let's go back in with our darkest color. And Chrissy says, when you had a farm, you had badger dens. Illegal to hunt them, they're still poached. Oh, they carry tuberculosis. Oh my goodness. Youch. Yeah, it's, um, it's good they can somehow kind of control them, but were they, I wonder, were they endangered? Is that why they were, why you couldn't get rid of them? Maybe they were on an endangered list or something.
Yeah, green gold, exactly. Yeah, that's neat, Chrissy. Okay, so what, what we can do now is go in and uh, we can make another green. I'd like to make another green using some yellow and some of this Mars black, just a touch of this Mars black. Oh, they are, they are, Ian? Are you saying, you're saying that the skunk is cute or you're saying um, that the badgers are protected? I, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to follow. There's a lag on the, on the feed, so I can't necessarily tell if you were responding to badgers or you were responding to skunk, Ian. So I got a little bit of red on the bottom of my knife, so I'm gonna try and just get that wiped off. And, um, okay, so it's illegal to kill them. Yeah, okay, so they must be protected then. So I'm gonna mix up a little um, green here, a dark green that I just mixed up with a little bit of the yellow and the black. And let's go ahead and get that on our get this up on here and just keep uh, this dark spiky aspect of the flower is really I find that really intriguing. I love that little spiky area and I want to play that up on these bigger sunflowers with the big head, they tend to have really um, a nice, thick, spiky, heavy head on them. So I'm gonna go in here and get a dark core going. And then we can put a, let's get a dark, dark, dark line, make sure that we have a dark enough color. So we've got super dark here, but I also wanna um, make sure that this dark is dark enough for contrast. I'm looking for a lot of contrast in the painting. All right, so here we've got this and the green. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And Pine Martin, so Chrissy, you did a wonderful, for those of you who haven't uh, checked out Chrissy's channel, you should definitely, um, if you haven't already, Chrissy has a wonderful painting channel and she paints live every Monday and every Thursday um, at, I want to say 3 o'clock, it's 3 o'clock central, so that would be, what, 8 o'clock GMT, is that right, Chrissy? But Chrissy did a wonderful painting of a Pine Martin. And it was really wonderful. But correct me if I'm wrong, if I've got the times wrong, Chrissy, I think that's right. That's right, okay, so that time, yeah. But Chrissy Canvas Art, if you guys haven't already checked out. And also, if you guys uh, don't already subscribe to each other, I encourage you to check each other's channels out and um, everybody support each other. I think it's a wonderful community that we have here on YouTube. And it's uh, a lot of fun to see everybody. And I appreciate, every, appreciate that you guys are all here and you guys are all so wonderful and so supportive. All right, so what I'd like to do now is um, I want to do uh, the idea of negative painting, which does not mean we're painting with a bad attitude, but we're, um, you miss my, uh, Joe Leg. hello Joe, good to see you. Thank you for joining us, Joe, and I appreciate you guys, um, I appreciate that you guys subscribe and ring the bell and everything that you do, um, you guys are so nice and so wonderful. So um, so the idea of uh, making sure um, uh, I'm going to squint on this, I want to have a lot of light values. I want to try and have a dynamic and loose and colorful painting. So I'm having a goal to have a lot of darks. So we've got dark, kind of a value, about a two here. We've got that here in the painting. 
and then we've got some lighter values and some medium tones, but I'm going to use white on this background, even though I've toned it with the yellow ochre. When I put a white over the top, bits of the yellow ochre will still show through. And, um, and so I'm going to do a technique called negative painting, which means that um, we're painting, we're sculpting out the, um, the flowers, the petals, that type of thing, and we'll actually overlap some of the areas that have already been painted. And we're, um, by doing a negative painting, we're removing and carving out the basic shape. And then also um, thinking about the negative space. So the negative space, so it's a different topic, but negative space is what, other, what you might be thinking of as a background. So the subject, of course, is the flowers. The negative space, or the background in this case, would be what we're going to do, the white. But I'm, uh, laid, I laid out, so I have like a part of a petal. I have parts of the flowers coming off the canvas because I want to make the um, painting feel like, like it's very um, explosive and the painting is very dynamic and exuberant. And by putting uh, this by putting uh, color on the coming out the side of the painting by doing that then that helps to kind of reinforce this idea of um, that the painting is very dynamic and that type of thing so I want to get an element of dark just to add to the variety of the shapes of the canvas so I could have painted this um, with the flowers clearly in the middle and a lot of white space all the way around, but I'm choosing to do this in a dynamic way so that there's an interplay between objects coming off of the canvas and an interplay of the items that are not. And uh, Georgia O'Keeffe um, did uh, a lot of work where she had things coming in and out of the canvas. And you're doing crochet. And Joe, I hope everything is going well with your knee and uh, everything is going well. Um, you're making an urm? It's a little bear? Oh, you're making a bear. A baby blue bear. That sounds like that's fun. Is it ERM? I guess I don't know what an ERM is, but I bet that's going to be really cute. Joe, you should post that. Um, will you be posting that on Instagram? So we're going to want to see that. All right, so now let me go. I'm going to change. So I've got my water needs to be changed here. I've got this water is, uh, I'm going to uh, switch this out with another bucket. Okay, so now we've got a clean bucket of water. There we go. And I can start now putting the white on. So when I go and do this white, I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to grab a pretty big brush here. We'll get this guy, uh, this big guy. This is a American Painter inch and a half, um, 4550 wash size. And it's got a nice, uh, it's a, a wash size, meaning it's a flat edge. And it will put a lot of paint on. So I'm just going to go over to my white. And just, I want to, when I'm putting this on, I want to use a larger brushes I feel comfortable with. And just go in and, and I'm not going to try and cover all of the yellow ochre that was used at the beginning. I want to try and have some of it show through. And this is part of the loose and expressive. I'm just letting my wrist Kind of just play over the top. And I'm going to put a mark. Let's put one. Let's go all the way. So I just did that where you see like we had it painted all the way up. And I can just go in and do a little mark um, like that. And I can see I need to put some more uh, paint on the canvas or on my palette. Let's get our white back out here and I'll add a little bit more because this will take a fair amount of paint. Whew. 
All right, so. Whoops, there go my paints on the floor. <laughs> the containers of paint. There we go. Okay. <laughs> the tubes of paint. Everything is fine. All right, so let's just add a little bit more of the white here. And uh, if I get white where I don't want it, I can just come back in with a brush and then just uh, wipe that back out, like here. Whoops. Now that paint hadn't dried, so I left a hole. Let's put a little, let's give him a little bit more. There we go. Can you guys hear Romeo and Groshi back there? Oh yeah, speaking of Romeo and Groshi, um, and uh, Joe says, uh, chirp dancing queen for us. So we'll do, we'll do one song today. Um, should we try dancing queen? Cause uh, last time Romeo did really like dancing queen. Should we try it again and we'll see if we can activate him? We'll just do one song. So uh, write in the chat if you think we should use that song or should we have him try a different one today? He, I know he did like dancing queen a lot. He responded to that. It almost sounded like he said yes. <laughs> and then Chrissy says, Chrissy says, oops. Yeah, when I dropped my things. Okay, the good news is they were just sitting in a, it was a little, I had a that little tray and I had the tray balanced on a chair. So it just, it fell off of the thing, but it's fine. Everything's got a lid on it. And just the tray fell. Now when I'm putting this on, I'm uh, some of the things, sometimes I'm going, I'm, I'm working like in and out of the petals in a way to make some areas, some soft edges and some hard edges and that type of thing. And again, just uh, trying to have a loose and open feeling to the painting. And the reason that I'm, uh, there's another reason why I wanted to make sure that the petals were dark enough is because we're going to have a white background. It's important that the subject stick out enough. And he does like, he does like Abba. Okay, Ian, um, we will fess up that, uh, we, will, we will fess up that, um, that we do like Abba tunes, yes. All right, so I'll give it a try. Okay. Let's try dancing queen. Romeo's responding. Well, he did it a little bit. Maybe, a, uh, I think Romeo knows we're listening to it. Oh, there he goes. That's great. That's our Romeo, huh? 
Do you guys have any pets? Uh, right in. I know, Chrissy, you said you used to have Yorkies and that um, your beloved Yorkie had passed on and it's too painful to get another one. But, um, yeah, write in if you have uh, if you have a pet. And if you have a pet, what's your pet's, what kind of pet and what, what's your pet's name? So we have Groshi and Romeo, the cockatiels. And then we have Muffin, the Yorkshire Terrier. We used to have three Yorkies years and years ago, the girls. And then over the years, they passed on. But we've got um, all the outdoor pets, too. The Senseleys and Mr. and Mrs. Lagomorph, Charles Wood, the wood, woodchuck. All right, let's get a smaller brush to work on the center area. So I'm going to switch over to a small brush to do the center area. Hey Elf and Channel Fage. Hi, good to see you and thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Elf, for saying that. That's my goal is to have it feel loose and dynamic, joyful. And I appreciate you saying that. Folks coming in, we're just uh, talking about pets and um, what our favorite pets are. So, so now um, let me go and get this part going here. We'll get a little bit carved out. So when I'm doing the negative painting, I'm carving out the areas that are letting the background color define what the subject will be, how much color or uh, where the color will appear and then um, carving out shapes by using the paint itself to carve the shape out. All right, so let's get a little, a couple of little in here. Let's get a little spot where we have, um, let's see, and how about maybe here? Let's get a little spot where we've got a separation with some petals and we can do one can actually do one here too there we go and uh, channel fad you said that you used to have a lot of pets growing up but you don't have any now oh and uh, oh Ian you had a newt that's awesome. And thank you for saying that, Sylvia. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Madonna has hounds. Her hounds can bark at the senseless, right? And your favorite pets were rats. Oh my gosh. You know, there are a lot of people who like rats. I had um, hamsters growing up. So I had um, Herbert, I always named them um, Herbert Hamster. I don't know why, and they were usually females, and I would name them Herbert anyway, <laughs> even though they were uh, biologically male, or bi bi biologically female, I would name them a traditionally male name. But um, but yeah, I had Herbert, and then I also had a hammy hamster, and, um, and then two guppies, uh, Peaches and Herb were my guppies, and they were pretty awesome. All right, so what I can do now is I can go in and, um, and Chrissy, you like horses the most, and Chrissy um, used to train horses, right? Used to break, break and train different horses, I think you had said, which is, uh, that's very, that's like, I would imagine that's physically demanding work to do that, Chrissy, to break a horse train it to uh, behave. Chrissy, did you ever say that to your kids that hey if I if I broke a horse I can I can train you as a child. Your daughter Christy, did you <laughs> did you ever give her a little bit of a time with that? I'm curious. Alright, so what I'm looking at now is some of the edges 
is I don't want to have too many hard edges on the flowers. So I'm going to just break up some of these edges a little bit. And let's uh, just kind of establish some different um, raggedy edges. So I like if some of them have got raggedy edges and some of them have got more of a smooth. Nothing can be done. Okay, so let's get a little more color over here and get a little bit establishing the curved part of this leaf. There we go. Oh, now it's done buffering. At least it is on this end, so hopefully you guys are able to see again. Gonna add a little bit more red in here, really play up this fiery part of the flower. There we go. I can see that on my stem, I have a choice. I can either make the petal go over or I can make the stem go. I think I'm gonna make the petal go over. So let's put some color here to make that petal touch. I wanna make that petal touch and interact with this petal here. There we go. All right. So let's go in with a little bit of the Indian yellow and blend this slightly, just really softly. Want to have some areas blended. Just touching the little bit of paint on and then mixing that in with the color that was the, the red that was just applied to just kind of soften that edge. There we go. All right. So, okay, and Elf, tell us know what you're gonna, let us know what you're gonna have for breakfast. Elf lives over on, um, he's in a different time zone, so he's, I wanna say that Elf, it's like two hours, it may be like 9.30 or even 8.30 in the morning where Elf Lord lives. Elf Lord lives way over on the west side of uh, the United States. And I'm in the Midwest. Madonna and I are in the Midwest. And so it's quite uh, several hours difference. And then you guys over in the UK and elsewhere, you it's late in the day by you. All right. And now that this uh, center portion is more dry, I can go in and add a, uh, there's a center in the flower. And I do, can just take a little bit of paint and just kind of tease that in. And then um, work paint around it. So I wanna show that there's like this raised area in the center. And I'm just gonna scumble over the top of that with a little bit of this yellow ochre. Then I'll come back over with some black on the other side. And it's just, it's super subtle, but it's a mark just to show where those, that raised area is with the seeds. And then if I come back with some black, I can put that down here, there we go. And I like to use a combination of the black and the dioxazine purple <clears throat> to show that, that bit of color down there. Okay. All right, so we're getting close. And what I'm planning to do with this painting is this is going to become, this is that an underpainting. So I could continue further with the painting and um, further define it and add details and such, but what I plan to do with this instead is to um, use this painting as an underpainting for a for my Daubism technique. So what now I've got is all the colors established and I can now go and put texture then and I'll do that. Um, I'll wait for this completely to dry and then go in with the Daubism texture. So what I can do now is sign the painting and I'll show you how I do that. So 
So let's get a little. Uh, okay, so um, how long, your question is, um, you're having chicken, okay. <laughs> Chips and gravy. Oh, goodness. Um, so yeah, different time. It's 5.30 in the UK. So, okay, so Channel Fads, you had asked how much time will be spent on the painting. So I started this painting here um, at the beginning of the feed, and I'll be signing it, and then I'll be going and doing another um, another session where I'll add dalbism, I'll add texture to the painting. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at this now, and I think I, this looks, hold on a sec, this looks like I need to, like this is too big of an item. I'm just looking at that, hold on. Um, so your question is, is, is how long uh, will I be spending on it? I'll be, um, there we go, that's better. I'll be spending additional hours yet working on it. But then the question is, is the painting ever done, right? That's always the, the big thing. You know, and some paintings for me come together quickly and other ones I really, I think everybody's that way, where it's like some paintings, I've painted a lot of sunflowers over the years and so that they uh, they go faster for me than other subjects. So if I, it's a f flower or something I've never painted before, it might take me, you know, twice as long, four times as long. It, it just depends. And oftentimes I'll spend just as much time on a on a uh, small painting as I do on a bigger one. It it uh, if the same it's the same subject that kind of a thing. So, okay, so let me show you how I'll sign the painting. So I'm signing the underpainting, and then when the texture goes over the top, I'll be careful to not, um, I'll be careful to not go over and touch that again. That way the, um, the signature will stay clean and I can put texture around it. Okay, so here's a liner brush. This is an American Painter liner. Hey, Caitlin Marie. Good to see you and thank you for joining. Caitlin, how is school going? Caitlin is a student. All right, let's get a little bit of, I'm just taking the black and I'm adding water to it because this is acrylic, I can water it down a little bit. And I'll get ready to sign over here. Okay, you, you're finished for the first time and you have another semester. I know you said that you have all of your projects turned in. You said that I think on the last live stream and that you're gonna do, um, you have to go in and now and do a final project, right? You're thinking of maybe doing some abstract texture with knives. There we go. Robert and Alshon. Hey, you guys, it's good to see you. And uh, what's Corna? Corna, the devil's food? I don't know what Corna is. Korma. Are you saying Korma? Oh, if it's like Indian food. Um, I love Indian food. That sounds delicious. So, um, all right, so you guys, you just joined, but I'll say I am, um, you got here late, but and we're just we're just about to finish off here. <laughs> so I am I am so glad, and actually I need to fix this here. Um, I am so glad to have you guys here. I appreciate your likes, I appreciate your subscriptions, and all of the friendship that you guys give. I'm seeing now that this feels like the pedal is too big. Let me just go and we'll just um, cut him back a little bit here. That's the thing is if you find something you want to fix, there, that's better. Then, um, you know, a person, you could just keep working on something. And, uh, you know, carving things out and adding things, adding and subtracting. It's a, it's kind of a never ending process. I'm going to still feel like I need to 
work a little bit on this petal. And I think what we can do is cut this down a little bit. That's better. And bring this in a little bit here. Okay, that's better. And Robert, it, how is uh, how is brother doing? Brother, uh, I hope brother treating you well. And pencil, hey pencil, you make a mean pineapple chicken curry. Ooh, now um, channel fadge. I am vegetarian, but my husband loves meat. I bet he would love your pineapple chicken curry. That sounds like he he'd love that. And thank you, Pencil, and good to see you. And I appreciate that you guys are here. All right, so now I can go back in and just give a little bit more definition to some of these petals. And I think what I also want to do is build this one back up a little bit. He's looking a little bit on the short side. So we have, I want to balance this a little bit. So I'm going to build this petal back up. I'll take some of the primary yellow and just paint right over the top. And let's also make him a little bigger too. Let's make just some of these petals a little bit bigger for balance. I'm trying to balance this section here and this section here. And I feel like I've made these two small. So I'll fix that by drawing these in like so. And then coming back with the other colors to tone it back. Like that, there we go. So now I'm doing what's called positive painting. So when you paint something onto a background, that's called positive painting. When you paint it and then you carve it out, like we did before, that's called negative painting. And it doesn't mean it's a positive or a negative um, personality or a person. It's just, uh, I guess that's just the way they named the art term. But I feel like that's better balance now. So let's take some of the diorolide yellow and move that up. And let's take the highlight color and put that over here. There we go. Just painting wet into wet. There, that's got a better balance. Then when I'm also looking here, I can see that I want to maybe put, extend that petal just slightly up above. So let's go and just extend that a little bit. There we go. And let's take and create a little bit more of the highlight. So let's play a little bit more with the highlight. Add a little bit of white to the yellow. And I'll take that and then I'll take more of that yellow and just get that worked in. There we go. And I'll just dip my brush in the water. Get it dried off and then I can feather that in by just wiggling it and working it into the other colors that are already there putting the brush almost next to the, almost uh, flat to the canvas. There we go. All right. Oh, it reminds you of the card that you made on Mother's Day pencil. That's sweet. That's neat. And Joe, thank you for joining us. All right, now we know Chrissy's a fussy eater. <laughs> oh, Ian, I will admit I'm a fussy eater too. I'm, uh, I'm in the fussy eater club. I, I hear you. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. All right, guys. Well, I think we'll call that good. And then um, I'm going to let this completely dry. And I'll be doing my um, uh, texture over it later. And uh, Caitlin, you're a, you're a fussy eater, too. Yes. Um, but your stomach. It's your stomach. Oh, yeah. You've got a sensitive stomach. I do, too. But not as bad as I know. Chrissy, you said you have the IBS. I know that that's a, that can be really a problem. So... I, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining.
And um, yes, Pencil, we need to see your paintings. Absolutely. So thank you everyone for joining. And I'm going to give you a quick kiss and thank you for joining. And I'm so glad that you guys are here. And come on back and see me again. And so until next time, it's Dina Tollefson and bye-bye.